Gyarados, Alola Marowak, Onjaru, or Oranguru, Crocodile Pokemon, and a Gengar who has Cursed Body instead of Levitate. Hmm. Well, I do know that I would like to bring my Butterfree here, I just don't know who I want to pair it with. If I bring Butterfree and Gyarados, that's pretty good. I have potential for Earthquakes on the Gengar if I want to. Um, I get intimidated pretty hard, though. Maybe uh, Butterfree and Lele is better? Let's see how that looks. That looks really good against Pokemon like the Gengar. It's okay against things like the Crocorock. It's good against Marowak. I think I'm going to do that. I, you always want to bring Butterfree against the Oranguru because it's just the perfect counter. And it stops Trick Room. Like, it looks like this guy has the potential for Trick Room as well as Instruct. And Butterfree just shuts that off. And it also makes a great partner for Tapu Lele. So we're going to go Tapu Lele, Butterfree. And let's decide our secondaries. Uh, my Marowak, you may always think, why don't you bring Marowak to these games? My, my Marowak is, has a really weird set, so I'm probably not going to bring it all that often, especially to a game like this. It just wouldn't work. Uh, my Gyarados is decent. I probably will bring the Gyarados here. Yep. And I'm looking at my Tapu Koko, and I'm not feeling it. I'm just not feeling the Tapu Koko, so I will be bringing my Garchomp here. Yeah, there's no way I would make my Tapu Koko work against both a Marowak and uh, a cro Crocodile. Cro Crocorock? I don't know that thing. The 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 worst version of Choice Scarf Landorus that we're going to see on that team. So let's see what he leads with. Good thing about my lead is he does have two Intimidators, but I'm not leading with any physical attackers. So even if he wants to lead with those, we're just going to line them up, knock them down. We have potential for Sleep Powders or Rage Powder with Butterfree. And what we're going to be doing is just kind of, you know, playing it safe. Let's see. So what I could do this turn, right? I could just go for the Sleep Powder on his Lele. If he's using a bulky Lele set, he will get Sleep Powdered and just go for like a Dazzling Gloom. That's definitely the greediest play I have, but I do think that is a Choice Scarf. What is that thing he's even in? Cro crocodiles or cro Crocodiles or whatever. That thing. The Crocodile Pokemon. If he is Choice Scarf, which they always are, he's going to pop that big Rock Slide. So Rock Slide has potential to double flinch my Pokemon. Uh, it's going to clock my Sash, deal decent damage to my Lele. And then if his Lele is full speed, it's going to be able to like Moonblast my Lele first in a potential speed tie situation. And I don't really want any of that. So like the safest play would be to uh, Dazzling Gloom to get the Crocorock off the board and Rage Powder. But the greediest play that could just straight up win me the game. Oh, I didn't, I should have checked who's the, uh, Psychic Train activated first. I didn't even see it. That would have uh, helped me out. I think I'm just going to go for the Dazzling Gleam and the Sleep Powder and just see what I can get out of it. Because it's definitely the greediest play. Let's see. Wow, I'm the fastest thing on the board. This is not what I expected. So he is definitely bulkier than I thought. And my top level is full speed, but I definitely did not expect to be faster than both these. So this guy looks like he is running full Trick Room. And this is completely fine, because worst case scenario, I'm going to lose my Lele here. I think that's the worst case. I, I just don't think... What, he, what is he going to do? Is he, He's just rock sliding. A very, very slow rock slide. They can't flinch anything. I mean, it's going to clock my Butterfree Sash, but, you know, like, that's completely fine. Like, Butterfree, that's why it has a Sash. So, let's see. I could, I will just be able to go for a Dazzling Gleam and a Bug Buzz up on the top of Lele. And unless it's holding a Citrus Berry, which is definitely possible, uh, we will be able to take it out. I would like to get the Lele off the board as soon as possible so my Lele can, like, exert its dominance. Uh, let's see if he switches out. He could definitely switch to Marowak, but then Butterfree still has that speed advantage. Uh, these are his two fastest Pokemon, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe the Gyarados. But, uh, yeah, there's the Marowak switching, just like I said. Uh, but, like, Butterfree has a, a complete speed advantage over all Trick Room Pokemon. So we should be able to take the Lele out unless it's running a Citrus. Alright, cool. It's still going to be kind of close, believe it or not. Because that Dazzling Gleam did a lot less than the first one did. Come on, please take that out. All right, cool. Butterfree. Oh, I got that crit, dude. Butterfree, man. Putting him work. I mean, when, you, when you're when you a Pokemon like Butterfree, you got to work extra hard. You know, that's that's the way I see it. So it, he's not going to send the Crocodile out because that would just go down to Dazzling Gleam. And then I would just Sleep Powder his Marowak. So he has to send the Gyarados out. I don't know anything about this Gyarados set. But it would be the safest thing to go for a Protect with my Lele and the Sleep Powder on the Marowak. I think that's definitely the safest play. Because we don't know anything about that Gyarados set. It's kind of... Let me see what I got in the back. I have my own Gyarados and Garchomp. kind of want to switch out to my Gyarados. That would be pretty sick. You know what? I will do. At this point, I feel like I have a very significant lead. His last Pokemon is a low HP Krokrok, which is very slow. 
So I'm just going to go for the big Psychic up onto his Gyarados slot, and just a Sleep Powder on the Marowak. So this way, in almost worst case scenario, well, maybe not almost in worst case, but I'm being very aggressive in doing this. Uh, let's say the Gyarados is faster and it kills my Butterfree. Well then, if it's faster, if it's fast enough to kill my Butterfree, it's not bulky, and then I can one-shot it with Psychic. So I'd be trading uh, two for one, but then his last two Pokemon are both Pokemon that just go down to my last two Pokemon. So he goes for a Protect with his Marowak. There's nothing really wrong with that, but he's playing defensive when he's already on like the back foot. So we see his Gyarados here eats the Psychic, and uh, it barely lives. It, is that a Sash? Okay, it's an Eject button on a very bulky Gyarados. Yeah, this game's pretty much over. Uh, it, it'd be really cool to see an Eject button Gyarados, but you have to have the momentum going. Like It's terrible in this situation, because I just forced it out and it doesn't even get to attack. He comes in here, wears up his third Intimidate on like two Pokemon that don't even like, take damage, or don't get their attack reduced, and at this point, you know, I can just go Dazzling Gloom Sleep Powder, his Marowax Protect is going to be on cooldown, he can try and go for a double Protect or switch to Gyarados, but then you just get put to sleep again. So, like, one of my favorite things about using this team is, you guys know that my favorite Pokemon is Butterfree, and, like, I'm literally just, like, giving people these losses with Butterfree, like, how, how freaking cool is that? That's one of my favorite things about this format, that I definitely have the potential to do those type of plays. I get a second crit, even though I didn't need it, and, uh, yeah, dude, I'm totally feeling this Butterfree. It's so good, because all these Pokemon are so bulky, and especially against, like, a Trick Room, Butterfree just shuts it off. It's such a good Pokemon here. Alright, so Marowak is a Sleeperino, and we already know that the Gyarados if I'm not mistaken, is slower than my Butterfree. Uh, because my Butterfree... Yeah, he ate the Psychic first. Well, actually, he's, that means he's slower than my Lele, so that means... Uh, this is kind of lame. So what we're going to have to do here is we're going to go for another Dazzling Gleam. Uh, Dazzling Gleam will chunk the Marowak just a bit. It would cake out the Gyarados, so the Gyarados might play a Protect play. He might go Protect with Gyarados and try and wait for his Marowak to wake up. So what we're going to do is we're going to go for that Dazzling Gleam, and we are just going to Rage Powder with Butterfree. We're going to show a little bit more of its set. And what this does is, if the Marowak can wake up and, like, revenge kill... Oh, he just forfeits. Cool. We were just going for the, the major style outplays with Butterfree in that game. Had all my options covered. I, I don't think that this is the same type of format as VDC 16, where you just leave with your Ubers and steamroll a game. I think that game was won because my Pokemon team was, like, made to beat his. Like, it, it's hard to explain, because that's, like, exactly not what I wanted to say when I said it. But in VDC 2016, you know, you lead with stuff, and you're like, Herp Derp, my stuff's better than yours, roll over. With, like, my team, my Pokemon aren't better than his. Like, Butterfree is not a better Pokemon than any of the Pokemon that he used, but it's different enough that there's not that many ways for him to... You just don't expect the Butterfree. I guess it's not really cheese, though. It's just, it's like a fast Amoongus. That's kind of like how I like to play it.